So we're here today to talk about the immunology of the skin. Um, to start off with, can you tell us how the skin helps to form a barrier against infections? Well, the skin is a complex organ and it contains many, many different layers of cells. Your skin contains about 16% of your body by weight uh, and it's really your interface between the environment that you're in and your body inside. And on the skin, you, you already have a, a bacteria, but of course, there are lots of things can, can infect your body, uh, whether they be bacteria or viruses or fungi or parasites associated with the skin. The skin contains multiple layers. The top layer is the stratum coronium, and this layer is a layer of dead cells. And those dead cells slough off, and they, they form about 3.6 kilos of dust, which you'll find in your house. And those cells are replaced by a very specialized cells that lie beneath this layer of dead cells. And they are called uh, keratinocytes. Uh, and they come from the word keratin, which is what, uh, which was what fingernails are made of. So they're, they're keratinocytes and they, they grow in something called the epidermis and they're slowly replacing all those dead cells which are dropping off from your body. Below this layer of epidermis, you have something called the dermis. And the dermis are made of cells which give you the strength to your, your skin. And so there's a special cell type called a fibroblast, and, and they form this layer of fibroblasts. And when you think about your skin, what, what gives it all that strength, and the reason why you can pull it, is because it has this layer of sort of muscular-like fibroblasts. In that layer of skin, we also have nerves. We know that, that because we feel pain. We have lots of blood vessels that are supplying lots of oxygen to the tissue. We know that because when you cut yourself, you bleed. Uh, you also have a, a, a layer of fat below your skin. That's perfectly normal. Everybody has a layer of fat beneath their skin. But that's very important because it insulates the skin. This takes on part of this, this role, and below that you have a, a muscle layer. And so the, the, the key thing here is this role of the, uh, the, the skin has multiple roles. It protects you from the environment. So it's not just the fungi and infection, but you also got UV light, which is coming down, and you wouldn't want to get cancer from the UV damage. It also is waterproof. If you didn't have a waterproof layer, you would get, uh, you would evaporate a lot of fluid out of your body. So people who've had severe burns could often die because they don't have, they're not able to stop the, the, the loss of water from their body. You've given a couple of examples of bacteria that are present on the skin. Um, could you tell us a bit about the bacteria that causes acne? So acne is caused by a bacteria, Propriobacterium acneus, and that's a bacteria which can infect, particularly in teenagers, in the sebaceous gland. And what happens is because of the sebaceous gland, because of hormones in teenagers, that sebaceous gland can clog up and it gets very narrow and the bacteria are able to grow where it's hard for the immune system to get rid of it. And what happens is, as the bacteria grow, that attracts these neutrophils, and they're a, very, a special type of cell that rush into the site to try to clear the bacteria, but they're not able to really clear the bacteria. So you get more and more neutrophils coming in, and you get something called T cells, which are an adaptive type of immune cell. And as they get in there, they cause uh, the formation of pus. Anybody who's had a, a zit, as they're sometimes called, uh, you would get uh, a white pussy material, and then it can turn into a blackhead, uh, and that's the dead and dying and necrosis caused by these neutrophils. So does the skin have its own um, bacterial ecology, and if it does, what role does this play? So the, the, bacteria skin, the skin has a vast number of different bacteria on it, um, and that's perfectly normal. And there are, like with any system, there are good bacteria and there are bad bacteria. Just as, as actually your skin is probably infected with a large number of different viruses as well. And most of them don't cause you a problem. So, so, and, and, and there'll, be skin, there'll be low levels of fungus on your skin. That's all perfectly normal. Uh, so you have a complex ecology. But the problem is if the, the wrong bacteria is in the wrong place at the wrong time, that's what can make you very sick. So moving on to look at what happens to your skin if you cut or bruise yourself. What role does the immune system play in this response? So there are lots of immune cells involved in, in, in response to a cut. The first cell I want to talk about are platelets, and they're very special little cell-like objects. that You could call them a cell, but they don't have a nucleus. Uh, some people call them cell bodies, and they contain uh, various factors which, when, when a cut occurs, they, they, they what they call degranulate, they release, and they form these fibrillin networks, and this is what stops you from bleeding. 
And so when that and these platelets have a key role in this clot formation, and they release lots of molecules which stimulate the immune system. One of the types of cells which is recruited to this clot site are things called neutrophils, and neutrophils are a specialized immune cell there to attack bacteria. They're ready to go. And these cells, when they get to the wound site, they're going to look for bacteria and they're going to trigger swelling, they're going to trigger pain, they're going to in induce redness, which is all things we're very familiar with if we've had a paper cut or if we've cut ourselves. They then recruit another type of cell, which was discovered in, in the, the early 1800s, uh, by Metchnikoff, which is called a macrophage. And macrophage are gobbling cells. They like to eat things up. And these cells are recruited into the wound site, and they, they have a role in gobbling up all this material and helping the wound uh, restructure itself and to heal to, so you get closure in the wound. You then can get all sorts of other immune cells moving in, but those are the three critical cell types. You mentioned earlier um, that fungi are also present on the skin. Um, could you tell us a bit more about this? Yes, so, so uh, clearly you can get a variety of infections and again you can get breakdown of the barriers like you do in, in athlete's foot. So the immune system has adapted to respond to various different types of infections. So it has a way of responding to viral infections and, and those are called killer T cells and they're responsible for, stopping, uh, for, for helping uh, stop things like warts grow in, in, on your hands. If you've got um, bacteria, you have neutrophils and you have antibodies being made and they help produce that. There are very, very special types of immune cells that make some very special molecules called cytokines of a very, very particular type. Uh, and they are, they are specifically there to help combat uh, fungal infections.